Okay, we're back. We're live. This is Think Tech Hawaii. I'm Jay Fidel. It's the one o'clock block. <clears throat> and uh, we're here to talk about uh, gee, community matters and more specifically to our survey results. Because every month we do a survey, we send it out to everybody we know. We try to get a handle on how people think about things and feel about things in Hawaii and, and elsewhere because it's on the internet, it goes everywhere. Um, and so this, this month, that is for the month of July, just over, uh, we had a survey called Elections During a Pandemic. Make that August, this was the August survey. Uh, we had it open for the first two weeks in August. And Catherine Nord joins me as, as she does every month. And we talk about the survey that we just finished. In this case, we just finished it on the 15th. Uh, welcome to the show, Catherine. Nice to see your smiling face. All right. Thank you, Jay. It's good to be here to talk about elections. Yeah, this was called Elections During a Pandemic. And let's go through the questions and see what we can learn from what people said. First question was, uh, are you registered to vote by mail in Hawaii? And that's very interesting because the great, you know, percentage of them, gee, it was 96, nine, almost 97 percent of the people said they were registered. Um, that is a very interesting example, and I, I think it's worth trying to learn something from that. Uh, why are 97 percent of the people who answered this uh, said um, they had registered? Only a very small percentage. What is it? One and a half percent said no, and uh, one one and a half percent said I don't know. <laughs> so. Um, so a um, question, what, what can we make of this, Catherine? Well, I believe that the viewers of Think Tech Hawaii are those who are very interested in what's going on in our government and, and do play a role. And they would likely be a bit more responsible in making sure that they're registered to vote. Yeah, I hope we do, uh, I hope we do better you know, than we have traditionally in Hawaii. Uh, our voting record has been dismal, but maybe this year, um, because of all the trouble on the federal level, we'll have better voting around um, the state and county and federal level. Uh, okay, so uh, let's let's go to the second question. Primary ballots must be received by 7 p.m. on August 8th. That's passed already, but this survey was in process. And the question we put to them is, have you voted or will you vote by mail in the primary? And uh, gee whiz, is really interesting um, that 88% uh, said yes, uh, serious. Only 6% said no. 3% uh, said they didn't get, they didn't get a, uh, I guess a, a voting, reg a, a voting ballot. Um, and yeah, that's it. What, what do we make out of that? Uh, that's very interesting. This was probably before before August 8th when it was answered and everybody said um, that they had voted. Well, I think it's a lot easier to vote by mail, especially when you are um, kind of in a state, you're safer at home order and a lot of people are, they have a little bit more time maybe uh, and they would attend to those things. So I think that has something to do with it. And maybe they care more right now because uh, a lot of people are pretty dissatisfied with how their lives are going right now because of the pandemic and they feel that it's important to have their voice heard in the polls. Yeah, I think uh, Hawaii can be proud of being a liberal state and having mail voting. We had mail voting before a lot of other states and our mail voting was, you know, un you don't have to request it, you just get a ballot. Um, that is a, a very advanced um, and progressive rule to have, and we have done well with it over the years. Uh, that doesn't mean we've, we've, we've voted in sufficient numbers, but at least we have a system we know that works. And maybe the fact that it's not working so well in the mainland, we can talk about this more, uh, under Trump and the post office, postal service, um, makes people want to vote using our Hawaii system of mail voting. Okay, the third question, do you intend to vote in the general election by mail uh, in ballot, mail in ballot on November 3rd. And you can see the answers. What do you think about that, Catherine? Well, I, I think it reflects the um, what they did locally. They intend to vote. And I think people are pretty dissatisfied with their lives right now for many reasons, economically, as well as the pandemic. 
And so when people are not dissatisfied, they tend to vote. Yeah, but you didn't say anything about the, uh, the heat of the election. I mean, uh, we are all of us besieged by media um, telling us to vote, <clears throat> telling us this is the most important election of our lifetime, of the century and beyond. And so I'm, I'm sure that has an effect, don't you think? Oh, I'm sure it does. And um, clearly it also reflects those who are answering the survey too, they're the type of people that are a bit more responsible and interested in our community and in our, our world because they've, you know, they're answering the survey too. Right, and, and, and the, the, we have to make a note on that, is not everybody in the world gets the survey or answers the survey and this, we, you know, we don't, we don't have, um, a, you know, a selected um, survey um, uh, demograph here. Uh, this just goes to the people that are on our mailing list, and uh, the people who respond, they they are on their own. They show they make that choice themselves. So it's hard to translate this into a community-wide uh, sentiment. On the other hand, among our community, it's clear that our community does intend to vote on November third. Okay, the next one is um, the mayor's races. Have you watched or listened to any of the? Mayoral candidate forums, mayoral candidates forums, debates, interviews, or uh, other such programs. And I can tell you, Think Tech has done a lot of interviews with the mayor, mayoral candidates. Uh, so we're sensitive to that question. And the answer here looks like yes. It didn't reach everybody. It reached 64%. Um, 30% said no. They hadn't seen any of that. And um, and three percent said they, they didn't know about these programs. I think it's kind of interesting. And and in terms of the open response, one of them said, "Out of town," and uh, another one said, "Nah, I read Civil Beat articles," which mm. is to, you know, that's to the credit of Civil Beat. Civil Beat does a lot of political coverage. As a matter sure. of fact, uh, was it, it's this afternoon. Uh, Chad Blair of Civil Beat is going to appear in a couple of hours on Think Tech with Colin Moore and John Waye. Why, hey, and uh, they're gonna talk about politics in Hawaii and beyond. Anyway, what, so what does this teach us, Catherine? What does this teach well, us about mayor's races? I mean, one way to get information is to watch shows. Um, another way might be they might Google the candidates and, and look into that. Others may already have preconceived ideas so they don't uh, watch shows about the mayoral candidates. Maybe they already had someone in mind that they plan to vote for, or they vote for someone that, you know, the person that their family votes for or something like that. I mean, there are other reasons why people make decisions. So uh, it's, I think it's amazing that so many watched that in um, those debates and forums and interviews. It's quite a bit. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm a little bit um, discouraged by the fact that uh, more than so just about 30% of the people we surveyed who responded to the survey uh, said, no, they hadn't, they hadn't looked at any of that. Because um, the fact is that a lot of people are home a lot these days in COVID. And they spend their time in large part watching television. I know everybody I, I know does. Um, and the question is what they're watching. And the answer here in this case is they're not watching uh, the, the political debates and interviews, which is, that's discouraging in the sense that uh, how much can you know? Maybe they're all reading Civil Beat, um, but, but I ra rather doubt that. I think they're ignoring it. And, uh, and then when they do vote, well, uh, how many said they were going to vote? Well, uh, there's also the issue of screen time because many people are working at home and uh -huh. they're on screens all the time. And maybe they, or, they're, or there's childcare, grandchild care, those kind of things. There are definitely a lot of things that keep people away from watching. Yeah, but this is prime time. All of this stuff is prime time. Oh, okay. Time. Okay. So, um, I mean, that maybe does make early sense. prime time, but prime time nevertheless. Okay. That would definitely you, make a difference. Yeah, I, I just wonder what, what, what information they're getting to do their duty as citizens and vote intelligently with some sure. evidence behind them. Um, okay, the next one is uh, the mayor's races. Have any of uh, these these things, and the things I'm referring to are um, forums, debates, interviews, and programs like that. Have any of these things influenced your support or vote for any one candidate for the primary election? And this is interesting because 
looks like 53% uh, said, yes, it has influence. And again, about 30% uh, said no. And uh, we don't know how many of these 30% never watched anything. Uh, maybe, maybe these are the same 30%. They, they don't want to, you know, they don't want to see anything on television about this or, or other programs that are not on television. Let's see if there's any uh, not applicable, if I'm not applicable to me. I'm not sure why that would be not applicable, but um, maybe they're in a distant place. Um, okay, there are no uh, specific responses to that. I mean, no, no general responses. So that's what we got. What does this teach us? That 50% well, uh, or more than 50% have been influenced. Okay, um, I think maybe the not applicable to me are those that maybe didn't watch. So that's how they answered. And mm -hmm. so I would almost think that those that should be equal to the number that didn't watch. But on the other hand, others um, interpreted as no. Um, perhaps people watched the um, that coverage and they already had a preconceived idea or they were what they heard was consistent with what they already thought about the candidate. So it didn't impact them. Yeah, could be, could be out of town. Uh, uh, who knows? <clears throat> That's a hard one to opine. Okay, next one about mayors. Mayors races. Have you seen, heard, or read any of the candidates' promotional materials, websites, ads, flyers, and signs? Lord knows there's enough of that. And uh, that's interesting because that reaches more people. That's almost, uh, well, that's 92.5% say yes. Um, they, they've seen or heard promotional materials, websites, ads, flyers, or signs. And the, the no is only 6%. So can you can you make sense out of that? What does that mean, in, at least in the context of all the other ranches we've been discussing? Um, in Hawaii, uh, most people have seen sign waving and there has been some of that. But I did realize the one day I went to downtown and I'm I'm not in town. The one day I went, I actually saw sign waving and I had not seen it at all because uh, I'm pretty close to home um, in my daily life with the pandemic. So maybe people are seeing less sign waving. Uh, I have gotten a lot of um, ads and flyers in the mail. So I've definitely gotten a lot of that and uh, probably saw a little bit. Um, I probably looked at some things on the internet about candidates, but others may, you know, it seems like you're going to get some of that no matter what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Your comment about ads and flyers, I think is, uh, is relevant to what's going on now with Louis, Louis DeJoy, my favorite person. Uh, our, our special postmaster general person um, <clears throat> who is um, slowing down the mail for the benefit of uh, Donald Trump. And I um, um, hadn't thought about this, but in fact, mail is, is, is intermingled, intertwined mm -hmm. with the whole election process. It's not only the ballots, it's, it's all those mail pieces that individual candidates send out to you. Um, and you know, that actually reaches a lot of people. And so if you don't have, if you take away their ability to send um, their literature out, you're, you're affecting the, the election process. Well, you know, that impacts it in another way too, because with the pandemic, uh, we, we have um, our computers, we have TV, we have mail. But if you, you cannot, as a candidate, you can't knock on doors because of the pandemic. So what do you do? You're going to send more flyers out or you'll try to you 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 may use the mail in that way uh, a little bit more so that does that is an impact yeah okay we have a seventh question is mayor's races how much importance do you place on the mayor's ability to respond to our current public health and economic crises and uh it looks like oh gee it was uh 80 percent plus said it's very important um 16 plus said it's somewhat important, that's very interesting. And, and the remark that one person left, which I think is really worth uh, examining, he says, or she, um, poor question. No one knows a candidate's ability to respond. The responses they have made are what's important and that's what we can evaluate. And then he says, or she, Kimberly Pine seems to have the best heart and sense of the matter. Well. You can, you can guess who that person is supporting. <laughs> but okay, we have a statement of a poor question.
But you know, and the first sentence is no one knows a candidate's ability to respond. The responses they have made are what's important. Okay, I'll go with that. Nobody knows anything for sure. It's all, it's all perspective, it's, um, it's an ex expectancy. <clears throat> but you have to judge them at what they say. That's why we listen to what they say. Comment? Well, you know, clearly the, this is talking about um, the leadership of candidates and whether uh, they would be able to respond to those important things. And I'm actually a little surprised that someone would say it's not very important because to me, it seems to be this it, it, uh, responding to current public health and economic crisis. Isn't that the essence of what, um, what the mayor has to do right now? Of course. Now let's go to question eight. Honolulu prosecutor, the Honolulu prosecutor race. Have you watched or listened uh, to any candidate forums, debates, or other such programs? I actually think Tech had a debate among all the uh, pr uh, prosecutor candidates uh, before the primary. Um, and the answer is uh, yes uh, for 40, almost 45 percent. No for 52 percent. I didn't. I didn't watch or listen to any forum debate or other programs. And one and a half said I wasn't aware of the programs, which is commentary. And then this guy says, a woman says, uh, I read civil beat articles. Okay, <laughs> there you go, civil beat again. <clears throat> so uh, what do you get out of that, Catherine? Um, are people engaging enough? Um, uh, well, with the prosecutor's race, normally in a normal election year, you wouldn't have hardly anyone pay attention to it. but because the prosecutor is not someone that would normally have as much um, notoriety, but post K Aloha um, scandal, uh, I think it's a big deal. And people see the importance of that position yeah. and are paying more attention. So you do have more people that are watching that. And you're right, you're right. So, and you gotta give the press credit for making it, uh, putting it in the, public, in the public discussion. Let's move on. We're, we're only, uh, we're not even quite halfway through. Um, Honolulu prosecutor, have any of these, that means the forums and the like, uh, influenced your support or vote of any candidate for the primary? And that was interesting, about half and half. Uh, half yes, that was uh, 39%, and half no, have not influenced uh, 37%. And then we got uh, this cryptic answer, not applicable to me. Um, I'm not sure why they say that. Um, Anyway, it looks like um, of the people who did know about it and participate, uh, only about half were affected by it. Let's go to question 10. Honolulu prosecutor race. Have you seen, heard, or read any of the candidates' promotional materials, websites, ads, flyers, or signs? And as you said, this was, a, this was a, an important election to a lot of people because of the context of Kealoha and the scandal and the federal investigation and so forth. Um, that excites people to uh, to be involved, and and uh, in this case, uh, seventy percent were paying attention to the promotional materials by the prosecutor candidates. What do you think? Well, it's it, you know we don't know these candidates, or at least the general public doesn't know them because they don't see them on TV or see them in situations. There, you those candidates are usually in the courtroom and. So the general public, non-attorneys, they need that information and they would pay attention to it. Yeah, that's true. We had all eight of them uh, on our Think Tech debate a few weeks ago. And um, I, didn't, I didn't know a lot of them. I had never met them, they either prosecution or, or defense. Uh, and they came from various walks of life where I have, I have not met them. I mean, I wouldn't meet them. You wouldn't meet them either. So this was a great opportunity to get to see them in action. And some of them were impressive, others were not. Uh, let me go to the next question. This is question 11. Are the different campaign ads, materials, flyers, or signs that you see helpful in general in deciding who to support or not support? I guess uh, in this question, we're talking about all of, all of the above, uh, all of those candidates, mayor, prosecutor, what have you. And the interesting answer is, well, thanks for the campaign ads and materials and flyers, but only 27%, 28% um, said that those were helpful. 56% uh, said they were not helpful. Um, what, 9% said, I haven't even noticed them. When I think of all the money that these candidates spend, that's really too bad. 
And then we got some specific answers from specific people. Personal knowledge is my basis. That's interesting. They must, that person must know some of the candidates. Um, or these, these um, materials show an attitude or bias. That's interesting too. And then on a superficial level, we know who the old boys network peeps are uh, already and we avoid them. <laughs> what do you mean we? Huh? <laughs> and one person said that he or she was a non-resident, so it doesn't matter. Um, let's go on to question 12. Do you think the election process, this is a big one, do you think the election process in Hawaii is generally free and fair? That's an important term given all the trouble and the just controversy on the federal level. And interestingly enough, uh, most people thought it was free and fair here. Uh, 71, almost 72% said that. 7% said it was not free and fair. 15%, um, I, I don't know if to, enough to say. 3% uh, said it's too early to say. That's interesting. And there was a, a specific, uh, yeah. Um, one, one person who specifically answered said, could be better. And here's an interesting answer. As a National Guardsman called out to run a precinct 20 years ago, when the Lieutenant Governor dropped the ball to run for Congress, I have limited confidence in the fidelity of Hawaii's elections. Ooh. So what do you think about this? Uh, are they right when most of them say that the elections are free and fair in Hawaii? Well, they appear to be. Um... But you know, there apparently are there is at least one person who has some information otherwise. Um, you know, it seems like it is. It seems like the ballots were counted properly. But uh, you know, I think that would be the perception, and that's how it was answered. Let me uh, lump the next two questions together. Question thirteen: Are you confident that the best candidates will win in Hawaii? And uh, that's a very interesting answer. Um, almost 60%, 58% said no, not confident that the best candidates will win in Hawaii. And then uh, there's, um, there's a question that is you know, directly related. Are you confident that the best candidate for president of the United States will win? And the answer was again, largely no. Um, where I, I mentioned a minute ago, 58% thought the best candidates would not win in Hawaii. On the federal level, on the president level, um, the answer is no, 55%, uh, not quite as high, uh, did not think that the best president for, for the best candidate for president would win. So uh, what, are those, uh, what do those two things tell us? You know, Catherine, I mean, does that speak of confidence in the system, confidence in the candidates? What does it speak? Well, um, we all know that one person loses and one person wins. And we all know that when we vote, uh, oftentimes the candidate we vote for does not win. So, um, you, know, uh, you know, people who vote for one candidate, they would think that the, if, if the other candidate wins, the best candidate was the candidate they voted for. So they would naturally say that that is not true. They, the best candidates don't win. So. I think it's logical that you're going to have at least 50% in for federal that it is going to say that that's that they the best candidate doesn't win. Um, I'm not sure about local because local, well, I don't know. It, it kind of makes sense to me. People are unhappy with their candidate not winning. Yeah, and I, and I, I read them together because I think there's in terms of the confidence in the system and all that, there's a relationship. One affects the other. We're not clear exactly how that works, but there's some relationship. Okay, uh, we got a few more. Do you think we should retain the electoral college for presidential elections? And this is interesting because there's been a discussion about it for the past couple of years anyway. Um, and 55% said, no, we should not retain the electoral college for presidential elections. On the other hand, that, that would require a constitutional amendment and boy, lots of luck on that one. Um, yeah, that's interesting that that many have been convinced uh, through whatever the media has said about it, uh, that we should not retain the elect electoral college. Let me move on, Catherine, because we're okay. almost out of time here. Sure. What is your general level of confidence in the elected officials in our Hawaii state government? That's question 16. Um, and I guess the, the leader is not confident, not so confident. Second one is I'm somewhat confident. There are some 
uh, who are extremely confident and some not confident at all. Um, but I guess the, the big one is um, not so confident. That's 40%. Somewhat confident is 30, 37%. Um, only 3% are extremely confident and not confident at all uh, is 7%. Uh, 10% uh, is very confident. So it's all over the map, except the leader is not confident uh, or somewhat confident. So the kind of a dishwater kind of, kind of array of answers here. Um, what do you think? I mean, is this, what does this tell us? Yeah, we're uh, do people don't trust politicians, what? We have we have such a difficult time right now. We've got COVID. We've got economic challenges um, stemming from that. It's a tough time to be a leader. I'm not surprised that people are not happy because no matter what they do, they're going to be unhappy because it's a di very difficult situation. Yeah, but you know, this is very interesting. In question 17, we asked pretty much the same question as to county governments here in Hawaii. And uh, somewhat confident was... Uh, well, 43 percent um very confident was only 10 percent extremely confident was less than that it was four percent five percent so i guess i guess there's a parallel um except that it seems to me that people are let me see if i got this right yeah people are more confident of of county government in hawaii than they are of state government <laughs> what do you think about that <laughs> Well, it means they don't like, they're not a fan of Ige and they think Caldwell and the other um, mayors are probably doing a better job, possibly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as one fellow said, one person said, extremely confident and a few others are lacking. <clears throat> that was state government and uh, the other was uh, county government. Uh, no, no specifics on that. Okay, question 18. What is your general level of confidence in the Hawaii delegation, the federal delegation to Congress, our congressmen, women, um, and our and our uh, senators? Uh, the answer is somewhat confident leads at um, what thirty eight percent, almost thirty nine percent. Very confidence is follows. So that's good. Twenty twenty two percent, and there were only a few that were not at all confident. Well, some were extremely confident, but that was not that much um that was only nine percent so it's somewhat confident is the winner on that and i guess that's that bespeaks of the fact that we don't really follow them that closely um particularly now in the time of uh, congressional dysfunction uh what, what can for example what can they do they're all democrats uh, what can they do in congress when congress itself is not doing anything because of uh, uh, mcconnell and the republicans in the senate um, so it, it, it's hard to have a level of excitement about our delegation, <clears throat> but we like them. I, I think we like some more than others, but we like them. <clears throat> Do you have any thoughts about that, Catherine? Well, it's all over the board. So yes, it it, is, yeah. you know, people have different opinions, I think. And I think sometimes we don't really know what they're doing because we don't hear from them as much. However, Ed Case was talking about the postal situation um today on the news so um i think we're hearing a little bit from them so that's good yeah i wrote i wrote to uh, louis de joy my favorite person post office person and told them what i thought of him um because his his um uh, his email address is on the web you can find it easily and i sent a copy to all of our delegation the one person the one member of the delegation who responded to me with a a significant substantive response was uh, Ed Case, and mm -hmm. I really appreciated that. Uh, well, it must he, have done something because um, the um, I heard that the Postmaster General has changed his mind and will be delaying changes until after the election. Um, I got that news today, so uh, maybe it was your email that did it. Well, my brain waves, one or the other. I think so. I don't believe him anyway. That's just me. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, question 19. What is your general level of confidence in our president, Donald Trump? And believe it or not, 10% uh, said they were extremely confident in Donald Trump. Uh, this is really interesting. 6% uh, said they were very confident <clears throat> and uh, somewhat confident, 6%. 
Um, so, you know, when you take all of that, you get, you get like 20% have confidence here in Hawaii, or at least the people who responded. 20% of the people who responded to the survey are at least somewhat confident in Donald Trump. You know Donald Trump, the guy, the guy who has made a, such a special mess of the uh, COVID uh, and the economy, that Donald Trump. Uh, there, uh, on, the, on the balance, however, um, 71 and more percent said they were not at all confident. Um, others um, said they were not so confident. And so the total of those two is going to be uh, about 70, 73, 74%. So that shows you that at least 70% 70, 70 uh, of the people who responded don't like what Trump has done. I'm not, I'm not surprised. What surprises me is that 20% of the respondents have some confidence in him. I don't know where that comes from. Thoughts? That reflects um, the makeup of our um, party system in Hawaii, um, that we do have a small number of Republicans. And I think that that would, I, I think that goes along party lines in Hawaii. This yeah, I think you're right. Okay, then we had, and mind you, this is dated to some extent because uh, things have moved on, but President Trump has said he wants to postpone, remember that, the November elections because of um, uh, mail-in voting fraud. What is your reaction to that? And we, uh, we found that um, the, the leading group, 57% said, I, I think such a postponement is illegal. And I think it is illegal. Um, and 19% uh, said, I think a postponement is unjust if that postponement is unjust, unjustified, even if it is legal. Um, the other smaller categories were, I think Congress should determine a compromise postponement. Um, lots of luck on that, 6%. And uh, <clears throat> the last one was, uh, oh, two more. I think President Trump should could postpone the election for a reasonable period of time, 5%. Um, that, that, that would be completely unconstitutional, but hey. Uh, I think President Trump can postpone the election as he sees fit in his discretion. Nobody said, nobody agreed with that one. So um, interesting that we only had, only had 56, almost 57% uh, saying that, that, that this attempt to postpone was um, illegal and um, could not, you know, could not be done. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Are people educated about this? Why would they answer anything other than that, that particular um, category? I, I think this reflects that people generally are ready for a federal election and perhaps they don't, they're not lawyers or haven't delved into the legalities of it and they're answering based on, you know, what they think. Um, uh, so, you know, I, I'm not, I, I don't know that I would judge those. I would just think that that's what they think or that that's what they thought at the time. Yeah. Okay. Now, last question. Maybe the most interesting question of all, and it's not dated. As the President Trump has said, he may not accept the results of the November presidential election if he loses because it will have been rigged. What is your reaction? And um, I guess the, the biggest uh, number of, of responses uh, is to uh, the category called, this will be a huge disruption to our democracy. He should step down, 57%. Um, then was uh, the next one is this will make him a sore and unreasonable loser. He should step down. That was a ten percent. The rest were smaller categories. There was a category um, which uh, I find interesting, almost tongue in cheek. Um, well, I'll give you all of them. His claims, the, his claims will have to be resolved by Congress. In the meantime, he should step down. Nobody, nobody agreed with that. Uh, they probably felt that Congress would not be able to decide it. Uh, the next one was he should be able to stay in office until the claims have been resolved by the courts or Congress. And that was 7.46%. Uh, and the last one is my favorite one. He should be able to stay in office if he or his attor attorney general find that, that the election was rigged. And that was 6%. Uh, most interesting. And, and, and on, this, on the specific answers, we had one said, Precedent and or law should be followed. Thank you. Next one is, he's doing what he does best. 
playing to his base, just like the Democratic candidates candidates are doing uh, fomenting nationwide rioting. You tell me which is more damaging, the most damaging to our democracy. Next one is, you mean like the Dems are calling Trump election rigged? Trump's election rigged? I'm not sure what that means. We should resolve the two, you, the two US constitutions. That's interesting. Our laws and processes will determine the legitimacy of the president's claims at that point. Next, next one, this is really interesting how people responded, they're really passionate. Blah, 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 this person says, why waste time speculating? In 2016, Hillary Clinton vowed to accept the election results. And for almost four years, she and the DNC, Democratic National Committee, have, have claimed Trump stole the election. Quit speculating. Both sides throw stuff like this out to see what kind of reaction it generates. It's just a distraction and part of an information war campaign. And the last uh, you know, separate comment is, he's working too hard to avoid being ousted from office. So he should be ousted from office. <laughs> <laughs> All right, just the last one and your last comment. Go for it, Catherine. Uh, well, you know, this is a long party lines a bit as well um, for Hawaii. And um, yeah, I mean, it, it looks like most people think it would be highly disruptive. And I think it will be if that occurs. Yeah. Okay, we'll have more we'll have more uh, questions along these lines and further surveys. The next one is uh, what for September, and then October, and then we'll have an election. <laughs> and we'll cover all kinds of stuff in those two months remaining before the election. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Catherine Knorr, one of our hosts on, uh, what is it, eSports? E um, wide World of eSports. Wide, wide World on of eSports. Okay, that's tomorrow. So Thank watch you. that. What time is it? Noon. Okay, all right. Watch Catherine tomorrow. And watch us again, the two of us, when we review uh, you know, the uh, survey for September. Aloha. All right, aloha. Thank you, Jay.